Hey everyone, what's up? It's Babylonius from PeakOfSerenity.com here with the first video in my Mythic Castle Nathria uh, commentary series. Uh, to give you a little bit of some guide information on how to complete the Mythic bosses, at least the ones that I've completed, um, as well as just provide some commentary over top of uh, my kill videos, which you can also find here on my YouTube channel. Uh, so to dive right in, uh, Mythic Shriekwing is the first boss in Mythic, relatively straightforward boss. A couple things you'll want to worry about, and I'll cover those as we go through. It is entirely a single target fight, so you'll want to set up your character for single target focus. Um, you can see the the strategy that we use um, using utilizing this corner and stuff. Um, we have since changed that to one that mirrors limit limit more often or more closely. So uh, feel free to check out limit strategy on this, or you can check out some of my um, VODs and stuff from our, my more recent rating um, to show how we use this pillar here um, to really trivial, trivialize a big part of this fight. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, so like I said, it's primarily a single target fight. The nice thing about this fight is that the way that his phase and intermission work out, uh, they line up quite well for a Windwalker's uh, DPS cooldown. So you see I'll pop all my cooldowns at the start. We have Bloodlust. This is kind of your big damage uh, phase uh, as you're going primarily single target. Uh, you'll see he casts Wave of Blood, which is a great ability to use your Touch of Karma on um, as it will eat up a chunk of that because it puts a big hit as well as a dot then on you. Um, he also casts that, which is Blind Swipe, which is another ability that you that it can be useful for eating up Karma. Um, Wave of Blood is generally the best thing to use Karma on, because it's not something that can be avoided, which helps your healers. Blind Swipe, uh, you can avoid it, so why take extra damage when you don't have to? Um, the big mechanic of this fight, as you can see, are these white orbs that are floating around. Um, and th those are there on the lower difficulties. However, the change is that you have to deal with um, the lantern, um, which I'll point out the lanterns up here. Um, and that gives you a debuff. And as long as you have that debuff, you can see the uh, white orbs, the echolocation sound orbs as they bounce around. Um, so what you saw is he cast an ear-splitting shriek, um, which is something he casts every 30 seconds or so. And when he does that, you just have to line of sight. So you see that I placed a transcendence down here. I did not use it the first time. I do, however, correct that and use that later in the fight, um, which makes it a little bit easier, certainly, to get to and from, um, although we're not moving very far um, with this with this strategy. we It's, it's very useful to um, just kind of cut down on the movement that you need to in order to be able to get to where you need. So you'll see I roll out, um, it goes off, Transcendence back saves a lot of time. Um, because this was our first kill, I didn't go too hard into the boss. Um, however, during this time while he's casting Blood Shroud, you can continue to DPS him. Once Blood Shroud is over, he gets a debuff on him that will <clears throat> that will reduce the damage that he takes by a large chunk. So really damaging him during this phase is not necessary. Uh, primarily during this intermission phase, your job is to stay line of sight from him whenever he finishes casting Ear Splitting Shriek. That's when you want to be out of line of sight. It's about a three second long cast, so it gives you a little bit of leeway time to get w where you need. Uh, during this time, especially on Mythic, you want to make sure to maintain the uh, Lantern debuff, at least a, a stack. Um, although certainly more stacks will simply deal more damage. Um, and then when the phase is over, you just resume, you go back to your positions, and singles target starts all over again, and, and you can kind of rinse and repeat. Um, there's not much else uh, beyond this. Uh, just kind of regular, if you do get targeted, as you can see Jester there gets targeted by Echo Location, he has to run out, and you'll want to take that as far away as you can just to eat up some of the... Um, or sorry, as to not eat up some of the space that you'll need to be moving around. Um, so again, if you get echolocation, that's another situation where using Transcendence or Windwalker's rather significant uh, AOE abilities, or movement abilities, I should say, um, can be very useful. So I'll speed things up a little bit just so we can get through the end. Um, you can see later in the fight, if you want to watch this video at full speed, or regular speed, you know, you, you could say um, the kill video itself is also on my channel, so be sure to check that out. Uh, you can see there I, I took a blind swipe I shouldn't have. Um, I didn't have any of my defensives up. Uh, the damage in this fight is primarily physical. 
The echolocation and his sound-based attacks are what's called sonic damage, which is both physical and uh, magical. Uh, so you can use diffuse magic if you so wish, although damp and harm probably will get you a little bit more uh, use in this fight just due to things like wave of blood, blind swipe, all being um, single target or er, physical damage. Um, but yeah, there really is not too much. You see, we run around, try to maintain the debuff, uh, fight the phase ends. Here I pop my cooldowns a little bit too early. I had to waste a, a global using roll, um, so it doesn't hurt to wait until they the target is back in range. Um, but again, the, the cooldown timing works out really nice for Windwalkers because we can use all of our cooldowns at the start of every phase. It just works out. Uh, that way just due to the timing. So you can see it's a very straightforward fight, relatively easy uh, for most groups to be able to get through, uh, but that's what you would expect from the first boss. So thank you very much for watching. You'll see uh, the fight's going to go down now. Uh, feel free to check out my other uh, videos on, the, on my channel. I'll be putting up other commentaries and guide videos on my Mythic Kills, as well as guide videos on a couple of other Windwalker topics and stuff you'll be able to check out. Uh, feel free, if you'd like to check me out uh, streaming on Twitch, um, twitch.tv slash Babylonius. On Twitter, all that other stuff um, will be down below in the description, as well as links to more information on peakofserenity.com and our Peak of Serenity Discord, Monk Discord, and how to support me through Patreon, PayPal, and stuff like that. So hopefully you enjoyed this content. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you get information on when other videos go up. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, have a good night, morning, afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are.